A transformer is a device that can change a voltage, let's say uh, VP, to another voltage that is either bigger or smaller. And when we learn about transformer, uh, we would often learn that it is related to the number of turns or wires uh, that the that the first voltage goes into. Let's say let's say there are n p turns here, and the number of turns of wire that gives the output voltage. Let's say that's n s. We often learn that the ratio the ratio of the v the output voltage to the input vo input voltage, which we call uh, the secondary voltage and the primary voltage, is equal to the ratio of the turns number. But how does this actually come about? How does the transformer work? Now, first we we need to know that the this voltage must be an AC voltage. It doesn't work for a DC voltage. And the thing is that it, it works by electromagnetic induction because the changing current causes the changing magnetic field and, and this magnetic flux from the first coil goes through the second coil and as the flux changes, it induces a voltage in the second coil. Now, in this and maybe the next video, I want to talk about how this relation comes about and what's actually going on uh, in the voltages and the magnetic flux. So let me start by focusing on just the first coil, and I would also leave out, uh, ignore the the iron that that piece of that rectangular piece of iron that I showed just now, so that this is just a coil of wire in the air. Okay, so this is just 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 air. Okay, no, no iron core. Okay, now suppose that, suppose that I have a current. Suppose I have a current flowing in the wire. With, uh, of um, let's say, zero point one ampere. Okay. Now that's. Think about uh, some typical size of this this winding this this coil. Suppose that suppose that there are one thousand turns. There are one thousand turns in this coil. Suppose that the length of this, suppose that the length of this is 10 centimeters, 0 0.1 meter. And suppose that the cross-sectional area, cross-sectional area of this is about 10 centimeters squared. So roughly a circle or a square of about three three cm wide. Okay, so these are enough numbers here then to describe this coil and to to actually determine how strong the magnetic field is inside this uh, solenoid. Which is what it is. We have uh, some videos ago. 
I talked about solenoid and the field inside and the kind of typical strengths of the magnetic flux density we would expect for, for some of these typical values. So I'm just going to say that uh, suppose we are given that for this current, for this current, um, this number of turns, this length and this uh, cross-sectional area, suppose we are given that um, the strength of the magnetic flux density call that B, that B is 0, let's say, um, let's say 0 0.001 Tesla. Now I, I would also like to know the direction um, the current goes this way, so this wire which you see here, um, I, I try to draw it so that it gives the impression that this wire is closer to, to us and the other part is further away from us, so, so it's hidden from, from by, by other wires. So that means that the current is going this way, it comes to the front, goes behind and then come to the front, goes behind and so on. So th this means that I can use my the right hand thumb rule by wrapping my right hand fingers around this coil in, in this sense. I would find with my thumb that this is the direction of the magnetic field. So let's say that that's the strength of the magnetic field in this case. So these these are the kind of typical values we would we would then we, we, we would expect then when there's a point one ampere of the current going through a turn uh, a coil of this description we would expect a magnetic flux density in the coil of uh, such a value of, of about 0 0.001 tesla. Okay, these are just rough figures. So with this starting point, okay, with this starting point, I'm going to try and um, work out, try and work out what happens, what would happen to to this coil or or to the magnetic field and the current and the voltages. What would happen if I were to start from, let's say, if I if I start from um, zero ampere, I start from a current of, from no current and I increase the current to 0.1 ampere. Let's think of what happens if I do this. Alright, suppose that I start from zero ampere and I increase the current to one ampere. Um, but how can I how can I do that? Well, if I'm at zero ampere, it just means that uh, there's no voltage. There's no voltage in the beginning. Now, if I want to increase, if I want the current to increase, I have to apply a voltage. Okay. So let's suppose that I connect a, a voltage here. If I connect some voltage here, the current will increase. Okay, the current the current will increase, but as the current increases, as the current increases, it will cause the magnetic flux density, it will cause the magnetic field, and therefore the magnetic flux to increase, and that changing flux must of course induce a voltage in this coil. Let's think about this induced voltage. Think about the direction of this induced voltage. If I have a field that is increasing in this direction, okay, so at first, at first it's actually zero Tesla. When the current was zero ampere, the magnetic flux density must be zero Tesla. 
as current increases towards 0.1 ampere, flux density increases from 0 to 0 0.001 tesla. So as the flux density increases in this direction, it induces an EMF in this coil. Now let's try and work out what direction this EMF is. We can think of um, the ideas from Lenz's law. Think of the idea from Lenz's law um, and try to determine the direction of the of the magnetic the, the effect on the magnetic flux density. But that might be a little bit complicated uh, in this case. And there's a there's an easier way to think about it. If you think about the, the principles behind Lenz's law, which is the conservation of energy. Uh, and, and the idea in Lenz's law, in Lenz's law, that um, there must be something that opposes the change of um, that, that produces that induced EMF. So if this flux increases, if this flux in, uh, uh, increases, it causes, it induces an EMF in this coil. Now what we need to decide is, um, first, which direction would this EMF be? Now if there's an EMF in this coil, an EMF, for example, would, would try to uh, cause a, produce a current, or try to make a current flow, and it will, and there are only two possibilities. You can either try and make the current flow in this direction, opposite to the original current, or you can go in, in this direction, in the same direction as the original current. So which is it? Now from Lenz's law, from you know the, the spirit of Lenz's law, we can actually guess, we can actually guess that the this EMF would try to push a current in the opposite direction to the incoming current. Because this incoming current, uh, uh, as this incoming current increases from zero to 0 0.1 ampere, it causes the flux to increase and the changing flux produces, uh, induces an EMF. Now the thing is that this induced EMF must, it must always, it will always tend to oppose whatever change that, that produces it. And in this case, it's the increasing current in this direction. So the, the obvious way to oppose that would be to try to push in the opposite direction. Now, and there's a simple reason why it, sh it should oppose, because if the EMF acts in the same direction as the original current, it will actually help the current to flow. Now, if, if that's the case, then you don't need to put in any input voltage, and the current will flow automatically, which obviously uh, can't be right, because it, it means that it will create electric energy out of nothing. So from this, we can therefore conclude that the Changing flux here, the increasing flux here, must induce an EMF in this direction, in, in a direction that, that is opposite to the incoming current. So that's a fairly straightforward way to, to decide the EMF without having to think about, uh, you know, the right hand thumb rule and how the magnetic Flux direction relates to the, the current going around the winding, which could get, could get complicated. Okay, so, so this EMF, um, as we have seen, um, must be in the opposite direction to, to the incoming current. And because, because it acts in an opposite direction, there is actually a name for this EMF. It is called a back EMF. It is called, I'll write this down here, back EMF. So when a current tries to flow through a, a coil, there will always be a back EMF that opposes the current, if, if the current is increasing. Right, now, this to overcome this back EMF, uh, we have to continue to supply apply this voltage. Okay, this this voltage has the effect of pushing a current through and causing the the current to to increase. Now we are assuming in this case that, that there's zero resistance here. Okay, I'm going to assume for now that there are zero ohms. 
Now, if there are zero ohms, then actually according to Ohm's law, the current should be infinite. Okay, because um, Ohm's law is V equals to I R, so R is equal to V over let's see. V equals to I R means that I is equal to V over R. If I apply any voltage, V over zero must be infinity. And the reason why the current don't go to infinity straight away is because the moment the current starts increasing, it causes the flux to change, and we have this back EMF that opposes the the incoming EMF. So instead of having a current that a resistance that resists the the current, we have a back EMF that resists the incoming voltage. And what this means is that this back EMF must exactly balance this uh, input voltage. This back EMF must exactly balance this input voltage so that the current don't shoot up to infinity straight away. So it, it is this changing current that produces the changing flux. The changing flux in turn produces a back EMF that balances the incoming voltage. So, and this means that if I know that um, there is this current that produces this uh, magnetic field, I should actually be able to calculate the this EMF and therefore the, the voltage that I need to apply uh, using Faraday's law. Now using Faraday's law we need to know the rate of change uh, which means that we need to know the time it takes for the current to, to increase to 0.1 ampere. Now um, so let's say that this takes place in a time of it takes place in a time of um, 0 0.001 second. In, in this very short time, suppose that the current has increased from 0 to 0 0.1 ampere. Then using Faraday's law, we can then find that the voltage, this um, this EMF, this, which, which I'll, call, I'll call this E, this E must be equal to the change in flux. So uh, I'll, I'll use this symbol to represent the change in flux, delta phi, and the delta t to represent the time taken. So that's my uh, flux change. Okay, that's the time taken. So in this case, my flux change um, Ah, not just the flux change, I must also multiply by the turn number. So that gives us the linkage. Okay, so that's that's the turn number. So th th that will be the turn number times the flux change would be uh, is starting from 0 to, let's say, this value here. I'll call this value B. So B, and I'll call this area A. So B times A is the flux increase from zero and the time taken is this time t okay and n is the 1000 turns b is um, 0 0.001 tesla a is 10 cm squared which is 0 0.001 meter squared okay divided by the time taken is 0 0.001 second. Okay. And the answer is 1 volt. So this, so increasing the current from 0, if the current increases from 0 to 0 0.1 ampere in 0 0.001 second, in this uh, number of a coil with this number of turns and with a cross section of this area, then this Faraday's law shows that it would induce an EMF of one volt, and this EMF would go try to go against the currents. Okay, so to have a current at all, therefore, the voltage across here has to be able to balance out this this back EMF, and if there is just zero resistance in this coil, 
then the voltage we need to apply here must be exactly equal to the back EMF. Okay, but um, and, and if there's a resistance, if there's some resistance here, the voltage must be a bit more to do work against those resistance. But we we must uh, be clear about uh, the situation here that it is not the back EMF that causes this voltage. It is this voltage which tries to drive a current into the coil that causes this back EMF, this, this EMF in the coil to appear and, and try to oppose it. So if I start from the beginning again, right, in the beginning there's no current, I apply, then let's say I apply a voltage of 1 volt. So in the beginning, I start with no current and no voltage, and then I apply a current, uh, a voltage of one volt. Now this one volt will try to drive the current through the coil. And according to Ohm's law, according to Ohm's law, this voltage, uh, with this voltage and zero resistance, assuming that there's this perfectly conducting and there's zero resistance, I should really get infinite current. So what is to stop the current to sh from shooting straight up to infinity the moment I apply the voltage to, to a zero resistance uh, coil? Well, what stops the current from shooting right up to infinity is that the moment the current tries to increase, it produces an EMF. It produces an EMF that opposes it and therefore that uh, can balance out the, the incoming voltage. Okay. Now, if the current should right up to infinity or become uh, or shoot up very too quickly, then this opposing EMF can become would become bigger than than the one volt I apply. Okay, if I apply a one volt uh, voltage, and that is not logical because if this can become bigger than that then the current will flow backwards okay but we are but it is this one volt that is the input voltage so the current should flow this way so therefore we would reason that this back emf can't be bigger than this right now the back emf also cannot be smaller than one volt because if this is smaller than one than one volt then there's no cancellation here. We, we still have a, a bigger voltage here than here. And this non-zero difference in the voltage must cause the current to go to infinity since a non-zero value divided by zero resistance must give an infinite current. So the only way out is that the, the back EMF, the, the induced EMF here, must be able to just balance this uh, incoming voltage. And that means that the current has to increase at precisely the correct rate to give a flux all right, in, in uh, say every second that is just enough to produce the, the exact EMF which will balance the incoming voltage. So in this, in this way, um, we can understand what actually happens to, let's say, the primary coil in the transformer. The moment you try to apply a voltage, usually uh, we, we would use wires with extremely good uh, conductivity, very low resistance, not zero, but maybe very low resistance. But the mo and the moment you try to in put in a voltage, the current flows and the current would induce uh, an EMF that balances the, the incoming voltage.